Hey everyone, it's Cecil, and welcome to Good Bad Flicks. With movies like Avalanche, Earthquake, The Poseidon Adventure, The Towering Inferno, and Meteor, the 70s loved disaster films. They took a break in the 80s, but came back huge in the 90s, mostly due to the massive success of Twister. Special effects had come a long way since the 70s, so studios were clamoring to make their huge FX-laden blockbusters. We saw everything from tsunamis, to forest fires, to asteroids, to asteroids, to asteroids. And even really bad thunderstorms got the big budget treatment. It's gonna rain! 1997 brought us two volcano movies. The Volcano in LA movie, where you don't actually see a volcano, appropriately titled Volcano, and the somewhat more realistic volcano movie, Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak is a 1997 action disaster film from director Roger Donaldson. The movie opens during a volcanic eruption in Colombia. Volcanologist Harry Dalton and his fiancée are trying to escape. You know, with all this mud and fire, if you added in some red-hot chili peppers, this opening would look a lot like Woodstock 99. Harry and his fiancée get into his truck. You know, if you're ever in a life-threatening situation, you should never say, To tell, honey. Because chances are, at least one of you won't. Four years later, Harry is doing some angry push-ups. He gets called in to investigate some seismic activity in the Northern Cascades. He heads out to the town of Dante's Peak to check it out. The exteriors of the town of Dante's Peak were filmed in Wallace, Idaho. The peak itself was a 100 square foot by 35 foot tall structure built on a soundstage in Los Angeles. They filmed it outside against the sky so they could digitally insert it into the film later. With that, we get some really impressive composite shots like this one. The peak in the background, the town in the foreground, and then they added the balloon in to give it some depth. Harry arrives in town while they're celebrating the Pioneer's Day Festival. Dante's Peak was just named the best, well, the second best place to live in the United States. You know, that's nice and all, but I wouldn't want to live anywhere near a dormant volcano. And this is coming from someone who lived next to a nuclear power plant for five years. Mayor Sarah Connor is running late to deliver a speech to the town. The picture in the back is an actual picture of the town from the 1800s. Two teens are skinny dipping in the hot springs, and ah, oh, damn you, PG-13! Apparently the guy just ate some McDonald's because, uh... This is scary. Jerry? How was that? Harry meets up with the mayor and... Hold on a second. Rocky Dennis? He meets up with the mayor who gives him a tour of the town. They stop to visit Mayor Wando's ex-mother-in-law. This scene was shot on location at Mirror Lake in Bonner, Idaho. They head up the mountain so Harry can check the acidity of the water. The kids wander off and find some dead squirrels. The FX department really wanted to get their money's worth with all these dead squirrel shots. Hey, Grandma! Somebody left their clothes here. Well, sometimes couples sneak up here for a hot dip. And some hot nookie. Ugh, inappropriate granny. They find the couple from earlier in the hot springs boiled to death. Harry calls his boss and informs him that the volcano might be active, and he's having a meeting with the town council. Harry's boss Paul shows up with a crew of volcanologists. This really nice composite shot is ruined by the awful delivery of this line. Oh, look at this nice little town. Nestle all snug and cozy right against the mountain. Yeah, just like Pompeii. Paul's played by veteran actor Charles Hallahan, best known as Vance from The Thing. Hallahan sadly died of a heart attack in 1997, only a few months after Dante's Peak was released. Harry wants to put the town on alert, but Paul insists they investigate the volcano further. The next day, Harry goes to get some coffee and... hold on. Sandwiches? The economy must be really tight if the mayor is working at the local general store. Rachel dumps hot coffee on him and asks him out to a date. The volcanologist group are setting up their robot, Spider Legs, to investigate the volcano. A cool little trick they did was record some shots with a handheld camera, and then they used that footage on the monitors as what the robot was seeing. The robot isn't working correctly, so they remove the ELF unit, or Extremely Low Frequency Unit. This is a device that was created so that if the robot's ever lost, NASA can find it via satellite. It's also a plot point that'll show up again later in the movie. The volcano in this scene is actually Mount St. Helens. They take the robot into the volcano, and it gets stuck. Terry goes down to fix it, and just when he does, an earthquake hits, and he gets stuck under some rocks. Harry rescues him and calls in a helicopter to medevac them out. Pierce Brosnan insisted that he go up in the helicopter to make the scene that much more realistic. 
It made for a great shot, but unfortunately the head of the studio was on set that day and was really pissed that the lead actor would endanger his life like that. They take Terry to a hospital, and aside from some bruises and a broken leg, he's alright. This hospital scene was shot on a set at 3 in the morning. Actually, this and many of the other interiors in the movies were sets that were built inside the local high school gymnasium. At this point, they've been in the town for two weeks. Harry tells Paul he knows the volcano is going to go off any day now, but Paul doesn't believe him and says that he's pulling the team out. Harry's walking with Rachel, telling her that he's going to be leaving tomorrow. They stop back at her place, but get cock-blocked by Rachel's daughter. Rachel goes to get her daughter a glass of water and, hey, it looks like Philadelphia tap water. They go to the town's water supply and find it's overrunning with sulfur dioxide. They wake up Paul and tell him that the volcano is getting ready to blow. So instead of starting the evacuation, what do they do? Attention all citizens, there will be a meeting held in the high school gymnasium at 6 p.m. They wait until the next morning to announce that there's a town meeting at 6 p.m. that evening. So essentially they wait almost a full day before they tell the people that they should evacuate the town because of a fucking volcano. The town meeting's in the local high school gymnasium. Many of the actual town folk from Wallace, Idaho were extras in the scene. Of course the volcano erupts and all hell breaks loose. You know, it's good to know that if there's ever an earthquake that trees and trophies are unaffected. This is not good! This is not good! He has a degree in volcanology. Harry and Rachel go to rescue the kids. This girl isn't crying because of the volcano. She's crying because this bunny is coming to kill her. Rachel and Harry head to her house, but see that the kids took her truck to rescue their grandma. Don't touch things. Don't touch things. You're gonna mess something up. But like what? I don't know. Something. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Oh, two kids in a truck on a one-lane road going up a mountain during a volcano? No, this is a great idea. Harry and Rachel make it to the grandmother's house to save her and the kids. The lava here looks great, much more believable than that marinara sauce they used in Congo. Their truck's destroyed, so they escape in a small boat. The river's turned to acid, and it's eating its way through the boat. And Public Domain Theater presents Row, Row, Row Your Boat by Pierce Brosnan. I think I'd rather jump in the acid. The boat stops moving, so Harry checks and sees that the propeller has been eaten through by the acid. Okay, how did he not get acid sprayed all over his face? Harry wraps his jacket around his arm and paddles the boat to safety. Good thing he had his acid-proof jacket on that day. So they're like a foot from the dock when the world's dumbest grandma jumps out of the boat to save them. I mean, look, it's, it's right there. Way to be a non-hero, stupid. Then instead of jumping on the duck, she walks all the way around to the shore. Oh, what a drama queen. It's morning and the National Guard shows up to evacuate anyone that's left in town. Since Harry's the only one strong enough, he has to carry half-dead granny. Old Chiclet Teeth finally kicks the bucket and Harry's relieved he doesn't have to lug her half-rotted ass around anymore. Paul and the team are evacuating the town and the local dam breaks and destroys the only bridge out. Paul gets swept away, but everybody else makes it out safely. Nice use of Wilhelm scream. <laughs> Harry and the group make it to a ranger station, and he hot wires a truck. They somehow manage to drive the truck across hot lava, and the only thing that happens is it flattens their tires. You know, I'm willing to suspend my disbelief to a certain degree, but even I have limits. Harry drives into town to get the ELF unit from earlier, and to drive past this same police car a bunch of times. The volcano finally erupts, and the pyroclastic cloud is destroying the entire town. Harry drives the truck into an abandoned mine and saves them from the cloud. Have you ever been deep sea fishing? Mm. Good. Neither have I. So when we get out of here, and we will get out of here, what do you say we go down to Florida, we get ourselves a boat, and we stock it with all the nicest, yummiest things we possibly can get our hands on, and we go out there and we catch ourselves a big old fat fish. Deep sea fishing. Of all the things to tell kids to cheer them up, and you go with deep sea fishing. Not Disneyland. Not Legoland. Deep sea fishing. They look for a way out, but a cave-in separates Harry from the group. He heads back to the truck and breaks his arm. He gets trapped inside the truck, but manages to turn on the ELF unit. Harry's crew sees the signal a few days later and sends in a rescue team. They manage to rescue Harry, Rachel, and the kids. 
Be sure to give him a big hug right on his compound fractured, possibly gangrenous arm. This end shot is actually taken from news footage of the real Mount St. Helens after it erupted. Director Roger Donaldson was a geologist before he was a director, so this movie was really important to him. He brought in numerous volcanologists to try to make the movie as accurate as possible. Even so, some of the material was embellished to make the film more exciting. Things like the acid lake and the truck outrunning the pyroclastic cloud. In reality, the lake would take on some acidic properties, but no more than soda. And there is no way a truck with four flat tires could outrun a 450 mile per hour pyroclastic cloud. The effects in this movie still look great, even 14 years later, due to Donaldson's insistence on doing practical effects as much as possible. The church was a real stone front that smashed down onto this bus. The buildings were also real scale that they destroyed during the earthquake. They then recreated the town in miniature form for the pyroclastic cloud effect. The volcanic ash was actually ground up newspapers that they sprayed all over town. The dam was a 30 foot model and along with the bridge it took them four months to build. They set up numerous cameras for the destructive shots because they know that they would only have one shot to get it right. The turnpike sequence was a mixture of real cars and models with some CGI added in. They did a really good job and most of the time you can't tell which is the real cars and which is the models. The volcano was loaded with five 10 inch air mortars that was loaded with ash to emulate the plume style volcano. While the story is essentially Jaws, only with a volcano instead of a shark, it really stands out as one of the best disaster movies of the 90s. It's a little silly and it's one of those movies that you can just goof on, but those are the kind of movies that I usually watch over and over again. It's coffee time! Coffee, 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 coffee! Cappuccino! Java! Yes! <laughs>